Beth Stone. I was born in Texas and raised in Oklahoma, eastern Oklahoma. I'm one of the owners here of the Golf Stop. Golf Stop is an off-course golf sh shop uh, where we sell all kinds of golf equipment, give golf lessons, uh, putting, hitting, the whole thing, uh, and get people into playing golf. You know, it sells half the line golf equipment. We do fittings so that everything that we sell fits. Uh, we do really big on that to make sure everything fits people and it's the best kind of club for their game. Uh, we opened in 1982. We've been here 38 years. Well, we op when we first opened, uh, we opened, we were down just to, by the uh, Old Pueblo Traders down on 32nd Street in a we warehouse that had, was a golf repair shop. Then it was big, so there was plenty of room for us. A man named Frank Boynton owned it, and it was for sale. And uh, Joanne Prentice and I actually started it with Bill and Kathy Cornelius. And Kathy and Joanne and I played the LPGA tour, tour together for 20 plus years. And Bill was a pro out of Phoenix, her husband. And so we started it together down there. And uh, it kind of took off from there. This is our third location because from there, after about 10 years, we moved out onto uh, right out on Albernon at 29th and Albernon. And then uh, we came over here about, it's been 11 years now. Some of the biggest differences, and this store is, is more open. It's a little nicer. It's, it's more, you know, it's not so crowded and stuffed up. Uh, all of them were big, but we did more things in the other, uh, in some of the other ones. We did a lot more, like um, we used to build a lot of custom clubs. We don't do that much anymore. We still do some, but now the manufacturer clubs are so good that it kind of put the custom business out of shape, you know, out of business, literally, because the others are too good. Putters have have changed a whole lot over the years, so putters are pretty popular right now. Everything everything has changed a lot, and everything's gone up a lot. Like. The clubs are so much different than they were. Like when we first opened, they didn't even have, they were just getting into metal woods. Yeah. Like when I finished playing the tour in 81 or so, they didn't even have any, metal woods were just barely on the tour. I played with persimmon, persimmon woods most of my tour years. I lived, uh, my family lived across the street from a uh, golf course in Muskogee, Oklahoma, where I grew up. And they started a junior program at, I was 12, and they started a girls program at 12. And I enjoyed it and just kept going. And then I went to Oklahoma University actually on a golf scholarship to, to play on the boys' golf team. But I was way ahead of my time because in 1958, they didn't have girls playing on boys' teams. And Kansas and Nebraska had, had a lady swimmer and a, and a uh, tennis player on, that they wanted on their boys' teams. But the Big Eight at that time, it was the Big Eight, had to rule on whether women could compete in intercollegiate athletics. And they ruled that women couldn't. So therefore, the three of us just kind of were there. And so I stayed at OU for two and a half years, and I went on the tour. I played with the boys, practiced with them. And I lettered, but, you know, I couldn't go play. So so I, I went on the LPGA tour then after two and a half years. Well, when I went on it, you just said, hey, I'm coming out here. I'm going to be a pro now. And he played. But now, you know, as it's gotten bigger and bigger, you have to go to player school. You have to, you have to qualify to play out there now. So I just went out and played. I think the first tournament I played in, I was paired with Patty Berg was right at the end of her career, and I played with Patty Berg one round and uh, Mickey Wright one round. So that was pretty unusual for somebody just out of college to play with really top players. But, but it was it was a, you know, it was it was a lot of fun then. It was more fun probably than it is now. You know, in the you know on the first in March we didn't shut down because you can see that we're a big wide open store with fans and AC and stuff, and every all the chains shut. You know, the big stores just shut and they left. Well, we're an independent. I mean, we, we own the store. If we just shut down for all that time, we probably would have just been out of business because there wouldn't have been any money coming in. Yeah. So we decided just to stay open and see how it went. And we were just besieged with customers. I mean, because they wanted... People decided during that time that since they didn't have to go to work, and a lot of the wait staff and guys, you know, they said, well, we'll learn to play golf because we're getting paid extra, you know, not to work. Yeah. And so we were really, really busy. And we stayed really pretty busy during the whole time. It slowed a little bit right now because of overseeding because they started overseeding the golf courses for the winter. So a lot of them are shattered and not in very good shape right now. So we're actually slower right now than we were during the height of the pandemic. Well, I took, I took lessons from the finest teachers that I could find, the most, the most known and the best teachers from Hank Haney and, you know, Bob Toski started me out, Har Harvey Pinnock when I first turned pro. You know, this is going back some. And, those, they, they really helped me a lot. And I ended up with Hank Haney, and he was Tiger Woods' 
main coach during Tigers, I think, 14 of his major championships. So, you know, you just find the best you can find, and you pay attention to what they tell you and try to do it. Jim Hardy, I worked with Jim Hardy a lot toward the end of my career. So I had some really good coaching. I paid attention to him. So.